the Drake feature curse. I don't know what that means. I guess he's saying that people that get a feature from Drake get cursed in their career. I don't know if that's true. I'm interested to see how uh, getting a feature from Drake can turn into a curse. Cause I've never heard, I've heard of the Drake like betting curse. Like if Drake bets on a game or a fight or something, it usually goes the other way. He kind of curses people in that regard. But I've never heard of a Drake feature curse, so uh, let's watch. For years, people have talked about Drake giving new artists a major boost with a feature, either on one of their songs or guesting on his projects. Because say, he's yeah. seen as putting so many rappers on over the years, it's no surprise that a lot of them feel indebted to him. I miss Drake, like, he's he a cool dude, you know what I'm saying? He's like, right. he real observant. So this has so been in a long time. Like, like 2018, we're gonna make it happen, but we made it happen for real. But while we all know the success stories of people like Lil Baby and 21 Savage, what happened? Wah, wah, wah. Yeah, I'm the baby. When the Drake cosign backfires and becomes the highlight of your career. Yeah, I feel like there's more good Drake feature examples than bad. And does right? that feature from Drizzy come with strings attached? That means you can never escape his shadow. From Kendrick Lamar accusing Drake of quote running to Atlanta when he needs a few dollars, <laughs> Yo, and can't. specifically mentioning how he uses his we can't get over that, rappers bro. like Future, Twenty One Savage, Lil Baby, and Two Chains as a way to be more accepted by the culture, it highlights a deeper point that I want to dive more into later in the video. Cause these oh, days shit. we have rappers like Rod Wave, a top-selling rapper with a die-hard fan. Bro, what happened to Rod Wave? And base what and the ability to, to sell out huge venues worldwide, even going as far as to turn down a feature from Drake. So it's clear that something fishy is going what? on. But before we get into how things went so wrong, I first need to explain how Drizzy got this reputation as a cheat code for success. By the year 2020, Drake assisted 32 artists to their highest Hot 100 position at the time. This included major stats like Kendrick Lamar, Future, Lil Baby, and many, many more. On average, the artists climbed up 19 spots from their previous highest position. Plus, 18 of these artists had never even made it onto the charts in the first place. Party next door. Oh my god, what does I Love McConan do now, bro? He made the Tuesday song, right? Before they got, they the got that Drake his peak moment of helping Tuesday. other artists Welcome came in 2017 when he brought seven fellow rappers onto the billboards or at least gave them a boost. By 2021, he'd appear on 41 projects as a guest oh since God. 2015, and 30 times out of those 41, his track had the highest streams on Spotify and YouTube for Holy the entire shit. project. And That's what I'm saying. How is it a curse? Of course, you know Drake I mean? didn't just let those numbers speak for themselves. He's constantly boasted about these accomplishments on songs like Mob Ties. Lead the league in scoring, man, but look at my sister. And now that Drake is facing Ooh! opposition from he artists said, like I lead the league in scoring, but look at my assist. That's Future, hard. Rick Ross, The Weeknd, and Kendrick Lamar. During the Raps of Award that's taken a hold of the game, his track push-ups... Before he says that, I'm trying to think of somebody that had a feature with Drake that their career like went badly afterwards. I can't think of one. I can't, also I can't hinted think of one, towards right? those who benefited from the stimulus package, okay, with shots like, every song that made it onto the charts he got from Drizzy, and your first number one, I had to put it in your hand. Because of the reputation as a hit maker who can uplift an artist's career, it's meant that getting the guest spot from Drake outshines cosigns from legends in the industry. A Jay-Z feature is still, is still considered one of the most important features you can get to this day. Drake. This was especially true for someone like Lil Durk, who was famously featured I thought Boosie hated Drake. Drake's absolute smash hit, Laugh Now, Cry Later. So good. In the studio, right? So this good. Mother, Drake come through the DM, like, I don't see him Man, you told me this before. I put the bit on that compilation he did, like, he dropped like four songs, and he didn't get on it. So when he said DM, Core's Bang. Bro, Laugh Now, Cry Later is so good. Laugh Now, Cry Later is still one of my favorite Drake songs. I don't know why I love it so much, though. It's still good. And Lil Durk is really good on that song, too. I called everybody. While you rich, it's over with. Like, <laughs> shit, he got, that, he got that touch for real. You hear me? Yeah, bro. <laughs> yeah, yeah I see Lil Durk. What we talking about? I call everybody. Mama. It's, it's over down. with. I'm finna do this motherfucker. We finna fuck him up on it. We finna go. And then so we came out. And the song was during the pandemic. Yeah. yeah. Straight to 100. Mm -hmm. And then it just kept Shout out out to Drizzy, man. Yeah, shout out Drake, though. He definitely helped him off out of thousand. Praised by so many who got that first taste that was of the bro. I remember that. Him. It's one of the few things that, until recently at least, most of his fellow MCs were happy to salute Drizzy for. I'm the only person that put on for me when I ain't have nobody was Drake. I'm Damn. talking about Drake was the... And now they got beef, bro. Why is everyone have to beef against each other, bro? And now they got, oh, what the hell? For years. Oh my god, yeah, now ASAP and Drake got beef, bro. It's kind of sad. It's kind of sad, bro. By so many, most of his fellow MCs were happy to salute Drizzy for. I'm the only. 
That's what I'm saying. It, keep, it keeps getting close, bro. I'm just saying. I, I don't want... The one person I don't want to see in a beef is Tyler, bro. I was thinking about that. It was like, damn, bro. I'm surprised Tyler didn't get no shots from Drake. Because Tyler's was, Tyler was in that video with Kendrick and Baby Keem. And he's like best friends with ASAP Rocky. So those are all people that like Drake does not like at all, bro. So I was just... I honestly was worried about a Tyler shot, bro. I Only person that put on for me when I ain't have nobody was Drake. I'm talking about Drake That's was so the first person wow. to put on like before anybody. He didn't want to sign me. Yeah. He didn't want it was like, yo, that's raw talent, yo. Like I, you gotta shine, yo. I'm I'm a see to it. And now they got beef, bro. Like ever, what? Ever old Drake. Annoying. Well, that's a little awkward now, considering the recent yeah, events that's man. taken the game by storm. But as much as Drake fans like to talk about how he can basically give rappers exposure or even revive their careers, this is only one side of the story. Because for every success for people like Flacco, Savage, or The Weeknd, there are people like Blockboy J. B, Sosa Geek, OVO Signee's division in the UK gigs, who haven't the returned to the Billboard charts ever since. As for others who kept their place in the game, the problem is that they just failed to replicate the early rush of publicity of that came from the Drizzy feature. That's why when the new artist Forbats got a collab with Drake, Forbats which debuted fire. with 3 million streams in its opening 24 hours Forbats on Spotify, not everyone saw it as a good thing for his future. So who are the artists whose careers capsized after getting the call from Drake? And how much is he to blame? When you think of an artist who fell off after getting the Drake feature, they don't come much bigger than Blockboy JB. A Memphis MC, yeah. who initially garnered attention with tracks like Shoot, Rover featuring 21 Savage, and the dance that Fortnite would later steal, Blockboy JB oh found himself getting the He made the shoot dance? DM Damn. from Drizzy, where he claimed he was his favorite rapper. They would eventually collab on a hit song titled Look Alive, and it went crazy. Oh, I forgot about Look Alive. Yo, Drake has so many hits that everyone just like forgot about, bro. He when it debuted. As it basically took over the game, like I completely forgot about Block Boy in the Double XL freshman list for 2018, completely. as well as a record deal with Interscope, peaking at number five on the Billboard charts. The track's official video now has over 390 million views on YouTube. Jesus, alone. like but that's a hit that like everyone like forgot about, bro. Everyone forgot about this song existing. That almost has 400 million views, bro momentum he had it's all just evaporated That's once insane. drizzy did what he always does and moved on to the next hot thing when his debut album fat boy dropped in 2020 it failed to chart and the same unfortunately goes for 2022's the back to the block although he still has his loyal core fans resulting in 2.4 million listeners on Spotify, oh, he's chilling. What we he struggled about? to come to terms with the negative impact that look alive had on his career even when people pointed out to him do you feel like you in some ways you kind of blew up so fast that it gave people weird expectations of what was supposed to be coming from you. Now, to be honest, I feel like it. I didn't even blow up that fast. It just like motherfuckers wouldn't even on me. So I just, when I had this song, it blew up. I didn't blow up. The song blew up. Mm -hmm. So like, damn, that's sad, bro. People didn't even just know that I had like fucking four mixtapes out before. Drake the does kind of just go to whatever's popular at the time, bro. Like looking for all the dogs, bro. He's got Yeet on it. He's got Sexy Red on it. He's got all these like artists that were just popular at that time. And I feel like he's done that for like a while. It's smart, you know what I mean? Because it keeps his name like in the topic of discussion but then he like moves on to the next thing type thing you know what i mean this, this I shit know, so i always which is again another big difference between him, him and kendrick like kendrick does not do that at all grind anyways so I there's nothing like wrong with that like, they're that. Just even though things aren't in his favor block boy is confident that good things are coming his way he still believes he'll rise go. to the top again and will eventually step out of drake's shadow yeah they're tuned out and guess what they're gonna come back again mm. if i see like it, it's just time. Oh, yeah. It just take time. And like the longer you keep rapping and the more like the more you keep going, it's the bigger your fan base get. Like you I know when I first dropped them with my real fans. Mm -hmm. Like I already knew that because I every time I look at my comments, we just see something about Drake or some shit. But now like the comments change. change. What's interesting is that these Damn. days, Blockboy is trying to ride the same wave by reaching out to Drake for another collaboration. This time he didn't just slide into Drake's DMs, but he yeah, made Drake a, not doing that shit. <laughs> Drake, Drake ain't doing saying, this again, bro. I think it's time for another one at Champagne Poppy. This time around, even Drake's fans recognized that there wasn't much for the six god to gain. 
game from teaming up with Blockboy ever again. Yeah, Some I even have gone far as to comment things like Drake probably avoiding Yo, no. Nah, watching that story bro. right now. And Blockboy It's fell sad, but it's true. Like, there's just no, like, who's listening to Blockboy JB right now, bro? Like, Drake has nothing to gain from doing that. Off. No waves to ride there for the boy. Rather than being the megastar that Look Alive set him up to be, Blockboy is now left in obscurity, and his fallout is even being mocked by fellow rappers like Bandman Kevo. Yeah, he fell out. Who the hell is that? You can't talk like that. Yeah, bro, I've never heard of him either, bro. What? <laughs> at least he got a song with Drake, you know what I mean? I would rather be a one-hit wonder than not make it at all. You know what I mean? I don't know, bro. <laughs> Does he have any other hits besides the one with Drake? <laughs> Damn, man. I don't care. I don't care. He shouldn't have said nothing about me. He fell off. He do not got no money like me. He shouldn't have came at me. He fell off. Who is this? All that dancing and doing this with the leg shit oh my is God. over with. Damn. He's not wrong. wrong bro. You don't got it. Once riding a wave that Drake hopped on, Damn. only to jump off before it faded, Blockboy isn't alone and briefly benefiting from Drake's knack for recognizing what's hot in the culture. Yeah. Sometimes this phenomenon even extends to rappers from Drake's own city, which was the case for a rapper by the name of Smiley. An underground MC- Oh my god, I forgot about Smiley, bro. Smiley was weird. From Smiley Toronto, was weird, bro. Smiley, Smiley was started weird. his career rhyming with the Garden Gang click. After a 2015 what happened to Smiley? derailed his momentum, Smiley got his initial exposure through tracks like Nine On Me. And soon, Drake could be seen rapping his track from the pool. She might dance, nice shots in my pants. Oh, Len, that's a label. She wants you with no cable. Now I'm popping that annoying. Wow. I don't join in. Firefighters on niggas. Right. Officially on Drake's radar since 2017, he soon signed to Drake's OVO label, and to him, it seemed like the perfect scenario. At that point, Drake really started pushing him heavily on social media. I seen a picture with you and Ross, and Drake captions the shit that you're his favorite rapper. Oh yeah, yeah. Right, what that felt like when you seen that? It was love, so I already, like, he's already said things like that too already, so I was like, I was just surprised he posted that. Like Some that. people like change their voice to rap and like you hear their normal voice and you're kind of like, what? I remember when I heard Four Bats voice, he like went on the stream with Aiden and I heard his actual voice. It sounds weird because you're used to like hearing him say, like it's kind of weird hearing people's regular voice sometimes. This dude actually just sounds like the way he raps. <laughs> like he actually just talks the exact way he raps, bro. Uh, you know right right yeah with that kind of cosign he started to believe that he was the one sure it's like i've finally gotten to embrace everything like you know i understand it seems like, like a nice I've guy been, like, but like i've been asking myself like why me why me but i'm gonna keep asking myself that for how long now like you know yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. real yeah. shit why me We're but here. it's just it's love like that's what's crazy because now i even see what he sees Real yeah. shit, like, you know, it's crazy. It's like, it's, I do believe, like, but unfortunately, he seems like a nice guy. It's just funny how he, like, he talks the exact way you thought he, like, you think he would. For Smiley, <laughs> no one else saw it. And when he finally got Damn. the Drake cosign on 2021's Over the Top, his flow got clowned by the masses, and everyone pretty much thought he fumbled his opportunity. Damn. I forgot about this. What am I listening to? <laughs> I remember this! Oh my god! I'm gonna get mad, bro, cause this I shit, remember bro, this that! Shit, bro. He getting me hot, bro. He was getting clowned, The comments bro. were just as ruthless. One of the hardest verses from Drake in a long time, and Smiley does this. Smiley sounds like he has, bro, bro, like he had tickle battles with his homeboys. Smiley That's sounds insane. like he has tickle battles with his homeboys. Oh, wait, right. Despite the fact that the track That's got crazy. number 57 on the chart, his 2021 album, Buy or Buy 2, sold abysmally, clocking in at just 1.5K units. How do sales work? How do sales and albums work? I don't get it. I still, I still don't really understand how those work. Like, who's buying albums now? Does, does that count for, like, streams? Or what? Like, when people say, oh, what did your album sell first week? Who's buying albums? Are you talking about CD and, like, vinyl buys and shit? Like, who who's really doing that anymore? In its first week. You know Since what I then, mean? He's barely been a factor, but has denied falling off. Without any real evidence to back it up. Who's buying music? Aside from music? the fact that he was chilling on a boat. Aww. But falling by the wayside in Drake's priorities after a hit isn't exactly anything new. I mean, just look at what happened to I Love McConan, another artist Damn. who acquired Drake's attention from a self-released project. He was so McConan's good. McConan's debut EP popped off. He was so of good, tracks bro. like Tuesday and I Don't Sell Molly No More. After putting in a call to producer Sonny Digital, Drake got his hands on the track and suddenly, McConan's life changed. 
Now, when Drake got on it, what did you say? Oh, man, I fainted in the house. <laughs> <laughs> I was like, what the hell happened? You know what I was just tripping with my friends, you know what I'm saying, smoking weed, hanging out. Somebody tweeted me a link like, oh, that new Drake and Ila McCona is fire. And I just favored it. Like, oh, yeah, that would be dope. He must mean, like, if me and Drake made a track, right. that would be hot. And right. I was like, yeah, that would be hot. The official OVO page tweeted me and was like, Drake, I love McConaughey featuring Drake Tuesday remix. And I was like, what the hell? I was like, no way. I met Drake after the show, after watching the show and shit. And then uh, he came up to me singing some more lyrics from like, I don't sell Molly and all that. And I was just like, what? How do you know my music? You know what I'm saying? Soon after that, McConaughey signed crazy, bro. to OVO. 2K17 buys, bro. And thought he won the music industry live. How do sell? Hold on, first of all, how do sales work? Like, bro. He's got to be good for life off Tuesday, right? Like, just off the song Tuesday, he's got to be set for life, right? Is that, year like... after he got signed... Because just keeps getting played, bro. was lifting the lid on the experience and even claimed that Drake threatened to put hands on him at one point. What? In a lengthy interview with The Fader, McConnell expressed how he felt like Drake and his crew were, quote, scared when they saw how easily he could cook up some bangers. Before expressing how he felt betrayed by Drake's camp, for the way he was treated when he entered their orbit. Why y'all want to play games? Why didn't y'all just tell me you didn't want to fuck with me anymore and just let me go about my own way? Why did y'all make me chase you all the way the fuck around and make me look like a fucking fool? Why would you do this? I was threatened by Damn. others. Someone I so-called look up to saying, we gonna fuck you up the next time we see you. Believing that OVO only signed him because they needed a hot song, McConnell has stayed on his independent grind. But nothing's ever hit the same since he had this misadventure with OVO. But while there might have Damn, always been a ceiling on McConnell's success, anyways one person who many think has been held back by his association with drake is party next door an r&b pioneer in the eyes Party's of the fans the fellow canadian has been clicked up with drake since 2014 and while the weekend refused to sign to ovo party next door was happy to sign his name on the dotted line i could go to a label where they don't know how to handle me and they don't care he said of his decision or i'll have a mentor who's been through it who knows exactly what i want to mean to my city and what i want to achieve they know how to handle your emotions i'll have freedom and guidance even though he claimed to have all this freedom he later revealed in an interview that he had to give drake the track wednesday night interlude for one of his projects even though he wanted it for himself but there's no denying that drake made a really big impact for him in 2016 come and see me got him onto the charts Bro, and come and see me is like the best like late night on the highway drive song of all time bro marvin's room and come and see me bro those are the two songs you play at night in the car, bro. Those are the two top tier best songs that you play, bro. In 2019, Loyal became his biggest commercial success so far. But there's times where PND's frustration with his role at OVO has boiled over, particularly when it comes to writing for other artists. I'm 23, but I feel 43. You know what I mean? That that's something to write for these other people. PND has faced Damn. criticism for either sharing his hits with Drake or finding his biggest successes alongside him. He once tweeted then deleted his plans to leave the label after one more album in November of 2020 when he wrote, One more album, then I'll tell y'all what it's like. But now that so much time has passed, oh, wow. it's hard to imagine that even as- He just had a feature on For All The Dogs, right? I thought they were so cool. Talented as he is, that he could ever reach the full potential he had before wasting valuable time on the shelf at OVO. As for others, the Drake yeah. cosign seemed to come at the perfect time, only to be unable to capitalize. This was definitely the case for Young Blue, an Alabama artist who initially made waves back in 2017 with Miss It, Blue has always had clear star power. But when his buzz started to take a little dip, having Drizzy hop on 2020's Your Mind Still changed everything for him. Your Before mind that, still? he was battling Why to get I know that song? Your Mind Still? I never heard that. a fair deal from record labels and almost signed his life away on what would have been a terrible contract. But the minute that he was seen next to Drizzy, he suddenly had leverage. The deal they was offering me uh, it was like a lot of projects involved in that. Like, and I was just like, man, I ain't got no other choice, like man. I'm just gonna take the opportunity, huh? Like three, three projects or so. Like, like four, and they wanted my old masters. You know what I'm saying? Oh hell to the fucking yeah. now. And it was like number like like t like two fifty type shit. You two point five mil? No, like two hundred fifty thousand. <laughs> like <laughs> advance. Okay, just Holy put shit. it in perspective. You know what I'm saying? Like before the Drake record drop. Well, soon as Drake. Why do I not know the song he's talking about? I have no idea which song they're talking about. I could drop. I was having bidding wars between eight and nine million dollars. Damn. Really? Yeah. The lead single from his album Moon Boy, the record peaked at number 12, and soon after, he was blowing up like crazy. But to this day, Your Mind Still has doubled the. Your Mind Still featuring Drake official video. I swear to God, I feel like I have to look this up. I actually have no idea what song that is. Hold on. 
your minds still Drake. I just want to know if I recognize the song. I genuinely do not recognize the song at all. Do I know this? I don't know if I know this. Okay. Where's Drake at? What are those Drake? I just want to hear the Drake part. Yeah, that shit, man. I'm not gonna lie. I've never heard that. I've never heard that. That's probably one of those weird, like, trying to be, trying to branch out his discography type songs, bro. The plays of his next most popular song. I've never heard that. And while albums like 2023's Love Scars 2 did all right, he still hasn't been able to get a hit that comes anywhere close to the impact He made a song called Love Scars 2, bro. Six God. Through these artists, we get a glimpse into the potential negative effects of getting the Drake stimulus package. But why does this happen to so many of them? And who exactly is to blame? Drake's critics often suggest that there are hidden reasons behind his collaborations. Since his rise to fame, he's faced accusations of capitalizing on others' sounds or leveraging their hype for his own gain. Back in 2015, when he first started co-signing Kodak Black, Earl Sweatshirt called him a vulture on Twitter, where he wrote, I still- Wait, what? I feel you, but I still feel like Drake over Raw's statement is, isn't is check out this new shit I heard. It's always self-serving. That's crazy! Like Drake's overall statement isn't check this new shit I heard. It's always self-serving. And a lot Damn. of people agree. Drake obviously embraces the curator slash trendsetter persona, and he's decent enough at it. But it doesn't ever seem like he manages long-term working Earl was throwing out with shots, bro, damn. Quote -unquote Yo, Earl Sweatshirt in a, in versus Drake in a rap battle would be crazy. I'm not gonna lie. Earl got bars, bro. Don't forget, Whether bro. 2015 Earl Sweatshirt versus Drake back then? It would have been two very different kind of battles back and forth, bro. But I want to see Earl send out a diss, bro. Dage Loaf, be crazy. Freddy, or McConnell. It feels like nothing can happen in hip-hop without him. He's a vampire. But according to Drake, it's nothing as sinister as that. Whether it's UK rap or Afrobeat he's tapping into, UK rap is so it's trash. just because he's a music lover. I like to enjoy what's going on, man. I appreciate, like, all these young people creating all these things. You know, it takes some real energy and synergy to, like, create a good song. Yeah. Like, I hate that people think that, like, me being, like, into music from these kids that are trying to like make it and yeah. trying to build a name for themselves is like, oh, that's some like, that's some culture vulture. Like, I would rather have him like collabing with these younger artists and like even the thing with him and like the streamers and stuff like that. I'd much rather have that than have like what all the uh, these like other rappers do and have a bunch of like hating ass takes on kids just like trying to make good music bro i would much rather have drake kind of like accept the younger generation of stuff than be some like old head bro like, like <laughs> what does that even mean i don't understand what that means yeah would you rather me like not exactly like, acknowledge anything yeah. or support like that's some hater shit but yeah that, that's, that's, that's exactly, exactly what i just said bro that's exactly what i just said bro mm -hmm. i guess people have their own outlook on it but it's fair to say that not everyone thinks it's as straightforward as that. In the eyes of the TDE rapper Daylight, he'll just use them up and throw them away. We live in an era where people need to suck other people's juice. Damn. So they're yeah. gonna make friends with him, especially you know who. He's gonna make friends with him. He's gonna try to do a song with him. <laughs> especially yeah, you like know who, bro. Everyone just hates Drake, bro. Everyone hates Drake. They're, gonna, hates get Drake. Your records, they're gonna take your style and they're gonna blow up, and then when you dry out, they're gonna keep going. And when you look at the careers of people like Blockboy JB and McConnell, he might have a point. Then you have the problems he faces with the artists on his label. Similar to PND's experience, there's a feeling that many of the artists are fueling the Drake machine. OVO's Majid Jordan once described a studio setup that was way more similar to a boot camp than it was to a recording session, where nice. artists are secluded, working tirelessly on projects without outside contact. That seems like a stretch, bro. You're not about to compare a music studio to Boot camp, bro. That's the crazy. result, well, it gave us hits like Just Hold On, We're Going Home, I'm about to say which, what, as many bro? of you know, it's one of Drake's most popular tracks. But it's stories like this that alter some fans' perceptions to the point that they believe Drake operates a musical sweatshop disguised as a label. So when bro, his newest signee, what? For that's a wild take. That's joined. They were trying to warn him about what to expect. 
Welcome to the sweatshop, four bats. Your stay <laughs> is indefinite. To know what? the Drake stand academics, there are definitely You're calling Drake Studio a sweatshop? That's insane. Problems that arise from the Drake stimulus package. Drake has successfully cleared himself of a number two. This was artistry and wizardry at its finest. Hear me out. Drake rocked all these newcomers to sleep that could be possibly an incumbent. Okay, little baby. All right, bet. You know, see, Drake never hates on the new guy. I guess better Drake shows Razor, bro. Love and almost gets credit for the new guy come up. Then after a while, yeah. he steps away from the nigga and shit never looks the same. But when it comes down Damn. to it, Drake is ultimately free to give a feature to whoever he wants. And if they're not on his label, he doesn't owe them anything else. In fact, while it might give these rappers a buzz in wake of the track dropping, it's not his job to give them a whole career. Ah, that's, I don't know. That video kind of feels like a stretch, bro. Oh, I, I, mean, I, I, I like the, I mean, he said after it's not his job to give him a career and stuff like that. This video kind of feels like a stretch, though, because he's talking about artists that were just like, he talked about like four different people that made a song with Drake out of the hundreds of features Drake's done at this point and used them as like examples. I mean, I guess, I guess the whole thing is Drake teaming up with like the younger artist whoever's popular at the time. But like, bro, even look at what just happened with Yeet, bro. Yeet had a feature with Drake and then right after that made his best album yet and he hasn't fallen off yet or anything like that, you know what I mean? We haven't seen Four Bats yet, but I mean Four Bats still has potential to like I don't know. I feel like the, I feel like it just kind of depends on the artist. I feel like it's artist to artist. I just I, I don't I don't think it's a Drake feature curse as much as people just not capitalizing on getting a Drake feature. If that makes sense. I don't know. Good video though. My life is a movie. Would you be the last? My life is a movie. Would you be the cast? Remember there was times why I didn't have to question it, but lately it been feeling like we hardly get affectionate. My life is a movie. Would you be the last? My life is a movie. Would you be the cast? Remember there was times why I didn't have to question it, but lately it been feeling like we hardly get affectionate.